Hello guys, so welcome to the next tutorial of this series. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to discuss about a few inbuilt functions of Python. When we say inbuilt functions, all what we have to do is to just call the function by typing in a specific keyword and the rest will be taken care of by Python itself. Now, for example, say int 5.2234. Just for an example, now if I press enter, you can see that what this int function does is it's taking any number which has some decimal points and it's actually cutting out all the decimals and just retaining the integer value which is basically the value uh, on the left side of the decimal point. So that's one of the inbuilt functions. So as you can imagine we didn't do much, we just call the function and we put in the number and it actually just removed, got rid of all the decimal points and it converted that number into, into an in integer. Now similarly if I type float for like this and you can see that I just call the function float but as the input I actually just put an integer over here. Now what this does is it's actually taking my integer and it's converting that into a floating point value. That's why you see the decimal point at the end and since we do not really have a decimal value it's actually just putting a zero there and which makes this number not not really an integer even though it was an integer by the time we specified it over here and this function basically converts that into a floating point number like this. Now similarly there's another function called abs which is basically the function which returns the absolute value of an argument. Now the argument that I'm going to specify is let's say 23.456 and it's a negative value and whenever I press enter you can see that it just basically takes the same value and it converts that into a positive value which is basically the absolute value of negative uh, 23.456 so that's what the function does for us. Now similarly there's another function called let's say pow and if I say 3 comma 4 now what this pow function does is it's actually taking 3 and it's taking the second value which I specified over here and it's putting this value as the power of this first value. So what we get over here is basically 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3 and multiplied by 3. So that's 81. Now similarly if I say POW 2 to the power 5 we get 32. Based on these two arguments this particular function POW executed the function which which converts these two arguments which resulted in generating the value which corresponds to 2 to its fifth power which is 32 just like this. Now similarly there's an interesting function in Python which is called input. Now what this input function does is it takes inputs from the users which we can use to sort of scale up to do a number of interesting things. So let me first give you a quick example to show you how this input function works in Python. Now if you simply say input, what's your name? Now what we can do is we can say input and I'm going to specify an argument over here which is a string. What is your name? Like this. And as soon as I press enter, you will see that the same question gets displayed on your screen, isn't it? Well, that's because now Python is expecting you to provide some sort of an answer for this so, or some sort of an input for this. So let's say we input some name, let's say John. All right. Well, with the type of input function which we have specified over here, this should be the end of it. Now, when I press enter, you can see that it actually just prints out John and the whole thing is done and we finally get this prompt again which means that that's basically the end of that interactive session. But we don't have to let it be that way. Now previously we lost the name which we typed into the system because we did not ask Python to let's say record that into a specific variable. So this time instead of just typing input I'm going to say name equals input what is your name and I will press enter and now if I type John as the answer. Whatever the answer I typed into this question now will actually get saved into this particular variable. Now how do I check that? I can simply say print name and now you can see that the name John gets displayed because right now the answer which I provided or, or the input which I provided to Python as a response for this question is now saved into this particular variable. Now let's say we want to add a follow-up question. Let's say we want to follow up with his age. Now we can create another variable called age and we can say age equals input. Please enter your age. 
Now whenever I press enter, you can see that we basically get the same prompt again and as the as the as my response I'm going to enter let's say 25. Now if you were to check this variable age by saying let's say print age, you can see that we have the response as 25. But let's say if you were to check the type of this variable, you can see that even though we entered a numerical value, the type is actually a string. So therefore, in case if you were to sort of uh, request this number in an integer format, you have to specify that in this manner. Means you actually do an on the spot conversion, something like this. We say age equals input. This is basically what we had before. Please enter your age. And as you can recall, if I press enter right now, whatever the response that we give in, despite it being in numerical figures, it's just going to get recorded as a string. But in case if you would like to make it record as an integer, what you can do is you can simply do an on the spot conversion simply by typing int and putting this whole thing inside that. All right. Now let's say if I press enter, you can see that, okay, please enter the edge. Now let's say I will enter tw as 25 as my response. And now if I say edge, you can see that still it prints out 25, but now if I check the type of this age variable, you can see that now the type is int. So just make sure that when we are using this input function of Python, whatever the response that we give in will get recorded in the format of, an, of a string. So just keep in mind, in some cases you might prefer it to have it in the format of a string, but there might be certain cases where you might need to have your response in the format of either an integer or either a floating point value. So depending on your circumstances, you just have to make sure that you have to put this whole thing and do sort of an on the spot conversion using either int, float or whatever the function that you need to use in order to do the conversion. Now, as I told you in this case, actually this is quite important because let's say you wanted to add a number to this age variable. Now, if I say age plus 20, you can see that it resulted in 45 only because we converted this 20 into we converted this uh, the type of this variable into integer from being a string because if this was a string then we would not be able to actually add a string into into a numerical figure like this now just to demonstrate that to you guys what i would do is i will just copy this one and paste it over here and I will put 25 as the edge. Now just keep in mind that I did not do any sort of on the spot conversions of our input into an integer. So right now the numerical figure which I entered is getting recorded as a string over here. Now if I just say edge plus 20, you can see that it's going to result in type error because of the obvious reasons which I just explained to you guys. So in order to make this whole exercise a bit more interactive, what I can do is I can create something like this. Now, as I told you, this Python shell is actually quite good enough in, in case if you would like to do some quick checks, something like we what we discussed over here. But if you're trying to write maybe something which has more than a couple of uh, lines of code, then it's actually better to just go over here to file and create a new file like this. And you basically get your editor now from here, you can quite comfortably write uh, multiple lines of code without having to execute each line every time when we press enter. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to put whatever I put over here in here. So this is my first line of code and my second line of code would be edge. This which uh, requests for the age of the person. And after that, I'm going to say print. We can say something like welcome and i'm going to print out the name whatever the name which i input over here and i can open the quotes again and we can say we look to celebrating your next we look forward to celebrating your next birthday on the day you turn plus what i'm going to do is i'm going to take whatever the input the user gives in over here and try to record it over here now i'm not so sure whether this will work perfectly or not but let's let's have a look now what you can do is you can first go ahead and save this you can go to file and save because now we are trying to run a script i'm going to name this as test script 
dot py all right after that in order to run you can simply go go over here and say run module or you can just simply hit f5 and now as you can see over here it's asking for our name now so i'm going to again input my name now this time i'm going to input another name let's say joe and please enter your age let's say 30 and you can see that our response welcome joe we look forward to celebrating your next birthday on the day you turn 30 but over here it would be nice if we actually had left a bit of a space over here so what we can do back to our script and just make sure that we leave one space over here and we can simply hit f5 to run this again and now you can see that it's running again now this time i'm going to maybe give maybe a different name let's say my name is mike and my age is 22 yeah you can see that the response welcome mike we look forward to celebrating your next birthday on the day you turn 22 now if you might be wondering actually this number should not be 22 it should be 23 because the person said that his current age is 22 so usually if there's a greeting like this then this would mean that we are anticipating some sort of a celebration in your next birthday which is actually his 23rd birthday in this case it should be 31st birthday isn't it i think you guys agree with that in that case we have to amend our script in a way that we need to put this value to be age plus one that's only when we do that this whole sentence actually makes sense i think that's clear for you guys but what happens if i just leave it like this maybe i can put a bracket uh, in case if you if it confuses you guys a bit so that whatever the input somebody gives as the age will be increased by one unit during the execution of this particular piece of code now that's what we expect to happen now if i press f5 and run this again all right let me go ahead with mike again mike 22 and when i press enter you will see that again giving a type error it says that it can only concatenate string not int to strings so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure that i'm converting this into an integer so that whatever the age which gets inputted by the by the user will be sort of increased during the execution of this code because then if it's an integer it doesn't have an issue of adding two integers together all right let's run and see how it looks my age is 22 now can you guess what the issue might be if we look at the code again over here you can see that it can only con concatenate string to string that means when we specify this to be like this and when we try to add one to this age actually this gets executed without any issue look at the rest of the statement it's actually trying to add this piece into a string over here but this by itself is actually an integer so we cannot add integers into a string isn't it so that's why what we are going to do is we are going to convert this on the spot into a string as well all right now let's try to run this and see what happens enter mic and the age is 22 and now you can see that we get the response welcome mic we look forward to celebrating your next birthday on the day you turn 23 now this is something which makes perfect sense based on our input isn't it now we can run this for another name as well now let's say this time my name is aaron and I'm 27 years old and now you can see that the greeting comes like welcome Aaron we look forward to celebrating your next birthday on the day you turn 28 all right now I guess you guys are more or less clear about how to use this input function which is one of the inbuilt functions of Python to sort of create a short interactive session like this now in the next tutorial we'll do a bit of a complex example uh, using the same concepts nothing nothing much new but uh, we'll try to sort of scale this up by just a bit to create something a bit more interactive and uh, something which serves a bit of a useful purpose all right so i'll see you in the next one